Richard Southern joins us now. And Richard, we've been following this since yesterday. A bailout is coming to the airline industry, and it could mean good news for some customers. Yeah, Air Canada gets its uh, much-needed lifeline, Erica, from the federal government, from us, the taxpayer. It's a big repayable loan, a low-interest repayable loan for Air Canada. Part of the deal was that um, Air Canada had to give refunds, cash refunds, to those who couldn't travel due, due to the pandemic. Remember, they were just giving vouchers up until now. Air Canada is not necessarily making that easy, though, Erica. You have to go on their website to apply for a refund. You only have until uh, June 12th to do that, and you're going to have to wait four to six weeks to get your money. Uh, Air Canada will also offer you a sweet deal on Aeroplan miles if you'd rather take them instead of the cash. You know, Erica, stock in the company closed lower here this afternoon, and part of the reason was the fact that the federal government, us, the taxpayer, took an equity stake in Air Canada. The government's buying stock in the company, doing so at a discounted rate. The existing shareholders weren't too crazy about that. A lot of people aren't too crazy about that because, you know, the stock's not necessarily going to go up. We could lose money as taxpayers on this deal. We'll right. have to wait and see. All right. And new research is providing us some insight into just how much of a difference universal child care could make for women south of the border. Absolutely. Um, obviously, this is a, it's been an ongoing political story in Canada, universal child care. But as you say, the study out of the United States, and it finds that millions of, of women in the States haven't been able to work simply because they can't find affordable child care. And uh, Columbia University finds that putting in place a reliable universal child care program that would cover, you know, everyone from birth to age 13 would get people back to work and would increase the lifetime earnings of a, a, a woman uh, by, on the average of 97000 so we're going to have all sorts of interesting benefits. And, of course, this is something you're going to hear, I think, more about from political parties on both sides of the border. Right, Erica? Yeah, important research there. And finally, uh, W. Galen Weston, the patriarch of the Weston Empire, which owns Loblaws, has died at the age of 80. Yeah, uh, I had a chance to meet him a number of years ago. And obviously, you know, uh, a business magnate here in Canada passing away. We learned uh, today of his passing, which uh, happened yesterday here in Toronto. He was 80 years old, uh, as you say, starting this uh, empire that included Loblaws and George Weston bakeries and also a lot of real estate uh, properties, uh, choice properties. Uh, his son, uh, Gayla G. Weston, who we know from those commercials and who we see there on the left, uh, is the current chairman of the company, uh, Galen Weston Sr., uh, retiring in 2016. He survived Erica by his wife, Hillary Weston, who uh, we remember from Queen's Park, she was Ontario's 26th Lieutenant Governor, serving in that role from 1997 until 2002. Galen Weston Sr., again, passing away at age 80. Erica, you and I, we're coming back at 6.40 for our interesting stories of the day chat. We'll see you there at 6.40. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks, Richard. Thanks. What went wrong when Toronto police investigated high-profile disappearances of several members of Toronto's LGBTQS